A reading from the second letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, whoever sows sparingly will also reap sparingly, and whoever sows bountifully will also reap bountifully. Each must do as already determined, without sadness or compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. Moreover, God is able to make every grace abundant for you, so that in all things, always having all you need, you may have an abundance for every good work. As it is written, he scatters abroad, he gives to the poor, his righteousness endures forever. The one who supplies seed to the sower and bread for food will supply and multiply your seed and increase the harvest of your righteousness. You are being enriched in every way for all generosity, which through us produces thanksgiving to God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Blessed the man who fears the Lord. Blessed the man who fears the Lord, who greatly delights in his commands. His posterity shall be mighty upon the earth. The upright generation shall be blessed. Bless the man who fears the Lord. Wealth and riches shall be in his house. His generosity shall endure forever. Light shines through the darkness for the upright. He is gracious and merciful and just. Blessed the man who fears the Lord. Lavishly he gives to the poor. His generosity shall endure forever. His horn shall be exalted in glory. Blessed the man who fears the Lord. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, Take care not to perform righteous deeds in order that people may see them. Otherwise you will have no recompense from your heavenly Father. When you give alms, do not blow a trumpet before you as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and the streets to win the praise of others. Amen, I say to you. They have received their reward. But when you give alms, do not let your left hand know what your right is doing, so that your almsgiving may be secret. And your Father who sees in secret will repay you. When you pray, do not be like the hypocrites who love to stand and pray in the synagogues and on street corners so that others may see them. Amen, I say to you, they have received their reward. But when you pray, go to your inner room, close the door, pray to your Father in secret. And your Father who sees in secret will repay you. When you fast, do not look gloomy like the hypocrites. They neglect their appearance so that they may appear to others to be fasting. Amen, I say to you, they have received their reward. But when you fast, anoint your head and wash your face so that you may not appear to others to be fasting except to your Father who is hidden. And your Father who sees what is hidden will repay you. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Whoever sows sparingly will also reap sparingly. Whoever sows bountifully will also reap bountifully. The opening line from our section from Second Letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. So interesting. It's the spirit of generosity or magnanimity. What you sow is going to be what you reap. So for stingy, we're going to the fruits are going to be stingy. If we're generous and magnanimous, that is large hearted, we're willing to go out there. The fruits are going to be abundant. Now apply this spiritually. Of course, you know me by now. This is the theme I always take up the, the spiritual angle. So what does it mean to be generous or magnanimous when you pray? Well, first could be, Devoting time, spending extra time than than normally would in prayer or any time at all. Um, What would it be like to spend an hour in prayer every day? Could you carve out an hour of your time? That would be a bountiful sowing that you would do. And the Lord is going to pay you back bountifully as well. How about a different kind of prayer? Um, you know, I notice this when uh, I lead people on on retreat, uh, directees. Uh, directees or people might be used to praying a certain way throughout the year. But then, like, for instance, if you do the spiritual exercises of St. Ignatius of Loyola, it's just kind of a specific way of praying. Now, there's wisdom to Ignatius. And, I mean, for centuries and centuries, men and women have been doing the exercises but someone might not be accustomed to that sort of prayer. 
it, it often invokes, you know, imaginative contemplation where you kind of picture the scene of the gospel. And, and it is somewhat rigid in that, you know, these are exercises to do, specific exercises. And the person might just want to sit and, you know, contemplate and whatever comes to them. But you may say, no, I want you to meditate on hell. I want you to meditate on sin, so forth. So the generous person, even though there might not be a custom that way of praying, does it. You, you sow bountifully, you'll reap bountifully. So just perhaps uh, apply that standard or that metric to your, to your prayer life. How can you be generous? How can you be magnanimous? Uh, how can you, how, where's the Lord inviting you uh, to be stretched? Of course, you know, these, this gospel is all about prayer. And when you pray, do not be like the hypocrites who love to stand and pray in the synagogues on the street corners. When you pray, uh, go to your inner room, close the door, pray to your father in secret. Well, I've said this before. Your inner room is in your heart. Go into your heart. Now, sometimes the inner room, the heart might not be a pretty place to be. But again, go into the heart. That could be your way of being generous. Trust in, trust in the Lord. He wants to give you abundant fruit in your life. Let let the fruit of the Lord wash over you and inspire you to, to be generous and magnanimous. Amen.